so uh, all right um, yesterday we did a lot of coding and a lot of modeling and uh, we introduced interfaces and we introduced abstract classes and we introduced the observer pattern do you follow the reasoning we had yesterday or was it way over your heads yeah uh, it kind of kind of can can become a lot of stuff that comes uh, in, a, in quite a short time span but uh, I think that you need probably to experiment with these concepts yourself and uh, you can of course use the the code for the dice game and add your own own views add some debug printouts in the code so that you can follow the execution um, and trying these things out is actually the best way to learn about uh, these concepts also. You can for example take the uh, model view controller dice game and implement your own observer and, and try to, to mimic what we did at the lecture just to get a better hang of it. So today I think we will conclude the architectural discussions and um, get more into the detailed uh, design work. So the last <clears throat> architectural pattern we will be talking about and it talks a little bit about this or, or a lot of about this in the book also so uh, as it seems this one has not waken up also classic pattern in, in computer science and computers uh, is the layers or tiers pattern. You can uh, kind of like uh, divide almost everything into different kinds of layers or, or tiers in, in computers and, and we, f we, f we find it kind of like everywhere actually. not want to play today so I'll try to keep the writing really really short uh, so we want a changeable system parts of the system should be uh, we should be able to remove some parts of the system and the whole system should not be affected and we want Yeah, we want to be able to reuse parts of the system also for for maybe other projects or other stuff. Oh, it kind of like removes my characters now also. So. <laughs> I wonder how much this kind of board costs. So we want to support reuse. We also want to group similar functionality in, in kind of uh, logical groups so that uh, people that are uh, interested in or expert in some, some part of the system can work in their own uh, sub part, so to speak. I want write solution, but you have the green now to um, <coughs> T 
Divide the system into layers. Let the top layers be more application specific. This is kind of like not working. So we have the application specific layers higher up and we have the more generic layers uh, lower down. And we let the uh, more specific application specific layers depend on the layers below them. So we always do dependencies uh, to a lower more generic level. So and we, we can find this, this structure in many uh, different uh, applications in, in computers. Maybe the most, uh, or I don't know, classical, but, but we, can, we can look at the system, like our web-based system, like a, we have this client machine, client computer. And this talks to an application server. And the application talks to a database server. Typical layered structure. You can exchange the client without changing the application server or the database. That is at least the, the goal. <coughs> and this is a, a typical physical structure for a, a web-based system. You have the machine, the actual machines here. And this executes a web browser, possibly. And this one executes Apache. Apache web server, and this executes my SQL. And the web browser talks to Apache via HTTP. And Apache talks to MySQL <coughs> using ODB. B, C, S, Q, L. And this is more like the process view. You can see the processes. The web browser is a process that executes on the client computer. The Apache web server is a server software that executes on the server machine. And the MySQL database management system is a service that executes on the database server. So here we have an example of the process view that is kind of like linked into the uh, physical view. So, and we can also like think about this in uh, the development view and think of it as a presentation component. On top. 
this is JavaScript, HTML, CSS images, stuff like that. And in UML components kind of like look like this. And they're a little bit messy to draw, especially when the smart board does not want to play. So we have a presentation component and we have a business logic. And we have a data storage layer. And we have dependencies like this. So, and the business logic could maybe be split the further into different layers, like uh, domain, uh, access, data abstraction layer, and so on and so forth. So, by using these different kind of views, we can understand different aspects of our system what is actually the hardware that we're supposed to use. This is how the, the system looks in, in hardware. We have uh, multiple clients that talks to an application server that has these specifications, that talks to a database server that has these specifications. You can think about it as processes executing and communicating using different protocols. And we can think about it as uh, components for developers to, to use and uh, look at. Make sense? Good. So I will just briefly do a, a small example of uh, looking into components. Components is quite interesting. In UML, components is a very wide um, concept. Anything is almost a component in UML. Source physical so source code file in PHP would, for example, be a component as it is an interchangeable part of the system. You can change it at runtime and the system will uh, be updated in some way. However, in, in general respects, components are kind of like a little bit larger, often a collection of classes uh, that has some, some kind of uh, responsibility or offers some kind of services to, to other components. So it's kind of like larger than the class concept. And by extracting components out of our system, we could can reuse components also. So we can ship and reuse collections of classes in a controlled way. And this is really good because if we have a component that is well tested and well documented, we should of course reuse it. And it's simpler to reuse a, a component than a, than, a, than a class. So we don't have to copy pasting source code or, or stuff like that. And different platforms have different, uh, different component architectures. And uh, most, uh, most languages have, have their own or platforms have their own. Uh, in, in Java, there are several different component architectures you can use, Java Beans, for example. Uh, we will just use a very, very simple way of packaging, uh, packaging your, uh, the, the executable parts of the, the system into different components. And we will actually just use the dice game as a small example here. So, If you remember, we can take a look at the uh, structure here. We have three different packages in our architecture, the model, the view, and the controller. 
and the user interface is the controller and the view. And th this is something that those two uh, items are kind of like quite uh, interconnected with each other. The controller kind of like depends on that there is a console view right now. So dividing them up into two different components is probably not a really good idea. But viewing the user interface as a single component uh, is probably a bit better. But the model can be, uh, be a component of its own. And in, in Java, the simplest way of, of thinking in components is to use uh, GRE files. YAR files, I mean. <coughs> so we can take uh, a command line program that is ships with the Java runtime development environment called YAR. We can create a component out of uh, a number of class, class files in our uh, system. And you really need to take care on, on the uh, small and large characters here, so I hope this will will do it. So we are extracting the, the uh, model out of our system and package it as a component. So we get a file here called model.jar. So and the next step then is to uh, remove the model from the system. So I just rename it. And then we need to recompile the uh, user interface. Should look like something like this. And when we compile, we need to tell the compiler that, OK, the model is located in this or this component. And the uh, rest of the dice game should then be co compiled. Uh, I think I will remove the class files first. You never know. So we have recompiled uh, like that. And we can run the system now using uh, the Java command. And we need to also, when we run the system now, tell it that, OK, the uh, model classes, the model component is located in this, this jar file. And uh, then we run run the game. So okay, uh, we can play it as as usual. So maybe that is not uh, so exciting right now, but if we make a change now, uh, we can we can call this uh, hard rules. And now I need to really not mess up. So we changed the rules to make the game a little bit easier. You almost always win now. We make a new to recompile the model for first, of course. Oh, 
and then we can make a new model component. that and now we should be able to run our game again notice that I did not recompile our uh, our system the user interface should have the one with the class path set Ah. So we should kind of like now win a lot. I won on a, on a nine now. So in this way we can implement different dice games. And we can change these components at, at runtime. In this small example it's, well maybe not that exciting, but, but uh, we could for example here use the hard rules instead, uh, model hard rules. Oh, I got the same numbers. So, and, and in this case, we lost when we got the nine. And this is a really powerful concept that you can take a bunch of classes and package them into something that your system can reuse as a whole instead of just copying source code files all the time. And in this case it's kind of uh, kind of uh, simple because when we run run the the dice game we specify okay you should use this component. But other component technologies has more of a like uh, you specify in the uh, in, in in your application to okay I would like a component that that uh, does this I need something that can uh, get all the users or something like that and then the the uh, you have a component management system that you can ask for services and the component management system looks through its register of components and says okay these five components fulfill that service that you want and you get one of them and then you can also take kind of like look for qualitative aspects I would like a component that does this functionality but uses uh, a lot of memory but is very very fast or I want a component that is very secure or I want a comp component that is um, does not use a lot of memory and I can live with it that it takes a few seconds more so this is a, a exciting way of thinking about composing software into different parts and offering services, looking at software as a service more. This is a little bit off topic, but I think it's really, really interesting. And it, it builds on these object oriented principles that we use, but it, on yet another higher level. I have a question coming here from the chat, I think. And different platforms have different different uh, strategies for managing this. On, on the Windows platform, you can use dynamic link libraries and, uh, and stuff like that uh, as the simplest form of, of component. Is this how you make full version applications and free tryout versions? Uh, not uh, not necessarily. You, you could possibly do that. Uh, yeah. 
if you type the correct password or something like that, you get the, the full component. Otherwise, you use a trial or limited component. Could, could be done, definitely. I think uh, you could probably solve that in a number of different ways also. Uh, but components are, are cool and exciting and also gives you uh, new ways of dividing your application. You can, uh, we have this logical architecture that we use, the model view controller pattern. And in our development view, we use different components, the user interface component and the model component. This also gives our, us strategies to, to fur further enforce how these components depend on, on each other. So uh, right now, we, we, we would not be able to, to make a system where the model component depends on something in the, the uh, user interface if we use the component strategy here, because it would not be able to compile correctly. And we will never be able to ship a system because we would not get it running. Uh, just using the logical view that, like we did, you can make mistakes. You can, by mistake, do something or by, by having a very small amount of time before delivery, okay, I, we ne really need to fix this. We don't have time to implement the server observer pattern, so we just hard code the system out print line in the die class, for example. So we can accidentally or uh, by by force add small uh, errors to our system that kind of like erodes our architecture. And unfortunately, these arrow errors are build on each other and at the end you don't really go back and fix them so your system kind of like deteriorates and this is called architectural erosion and that is something that is interesting i think <coughs> questions All right, we will be abandoning the exciting dice game for now and start on another application. And uh, we will use this application throughout the rest of the course. So uh, I think we should do it like this. Yeah, the same possibilities exist in other languages uh, and other platforms than, than Java. Uh, I don't really know about PHP, but uh, mo most uh, languages have some, some way of uh, building libraries or uh, making some form of more reusable component. Uh, C Sharp, you can do, the simplest thing you can do is DLL files and uh, stuff like that. And there are also, in many cases, more advanced component technologies available, web services, for example. So um, I think I will do it like this for now. I will make um, a small domain model, and you can uh, take a look at it. So we have a card concept, and the card concept has a value and a color. Have a deck concept. Deck. 
contains 52 cards. have a dealer concept. That handles one through six decks. I have a player. We have a dealer that plays against one through seven players and a player that plays against one dealer. So, and both the dealer has a hand consisting of two or more cards, and the player has a hand consisting of two or more parts. And the dealer also uses some kind of rules. Do you know what game it is? Yeah, Blackjack. How did you know? You're an expert Blackjack player. So, and this I think is a, actually a good way of testing your domain models. Can, can anyone understand what it is about by just looking at the domain model? Yeah, a domain expert can do that. You can probably find some other card games that would have a sim sim similar um, domain model to this. So, so mistakes can of course be, be made. But I think that this is actually a domain model that kind of like captures at least the blackjack game that we will be uh, doing. There are some, some, uh, some betting or money or something also that maybe should be part of a real uh, domain model for blackjack because that's a big part of the game, but we won't be doing that right now. So, and also if you take a look at, uh, for example, uh, Wikipedia. You have kind of like all the rules, uh, and it's a, 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 a basically a simple game of 21. Uh, the dealer deals cards to, to himself and, and the players, and the one that hits uh, nearest score to 21 but does not get over 21 uh, wins the game. And the, the dealer has certain rules that he has to, to abide with, while the players are, of course, free to choose when they want to get a card or not. Um, and there are some uh, quite uh, complex rules in, in some, some um, versions of the game. Uh, you can do bet-undering and uh, 
the number of decks varies uh, and stuff like that. But and you have some uh, probability tables here also, I think. And strategies for playing. Uh, but we will be be uh, doing a simple game of of blackjack, uh, and we will use number of uh, limitations in our game. We will only use one deck. That is actually mostly for testing purposes. It will be very much easier for us to spot if we have double cards, if we just have one deck, because one card should only come up once. So that is good in, in that uh, respect. We will have very simple rules. Basically, the player can do hit. Or stand. So you can select to get a card, or you can select to let the dealer play. <laughs> Stan. We will only use one player. And we will not use any betting. So we will do a very, very basic blackjack uh, implementation and blackjack game. But it will serve uh, the course well because we will find many interesting aspects of uh, design in this small application. So basically, we have three requirements in our application. I think I will try to write text in some other way now. Because the pen is really, really messy. Where can I find that? That just moved the. What could be text writing? Selects the font, but where do I write? Do you see anything? Figures, pen, text. Maybe you can just. So one, the game needs to be started in some way, and what should happen when we start the game? We 
We should create the cards. And we should shuffle the cards. And the second requirement we have is play the game. And what should happen then? The dealer should deal the cards according to the rules. The player selects hit or stand. And the player gets a new card if he selects hit. result who won this uh, game and three we should be able to quit the game and actually nothing special should happen when we quit, quit the game the games should quit so how about aces aces will be present in the deck Yeah, the, the rules of the game is that aces are scored as uh, 11 or 1. That's the basic, uh, basic rules, I think, of Blackjack. I think in our, in our game you will probably be able to hit as many times that you want, but if you get fat or uh, maybe that should be something that we clarify here, here also. Or get over 21, the dealer's place. So if you hit and uh, get over the score of 21, the dealer should, should play his uh, turn. Yeah. Yeah. This is the requirements I think in in this uh, this small example. It looks kind of like a use case. So, all right, I think it's time for a break. And during the break, you can think about how should we start uh, doing this? How should we start designing and, uh, and stuff like that? And look into the details of Blackjack, because I will probably forget a lot of stuff. So, 15 minutes of a break. <laughs> 